Honey bees belong to one of the few species of social insects which are able to survive winter periods as a colony. The correct management of colonies can improve the bees' chances in this struggle for survival. Management of bee colonies by annual rotation. An effective way of preventing diseases. Management of bees by annual rotation shows how colonies can be managed so as to remain healthy and strong throughout the year. These stocks have been well fed in autumn and are still in their winter sleep. Modern hives can be left in the open. Good hive stands protect the hives from rising damp and against the chill from the ground. Occasionally, the beekeeper must check that entrance holes are not blocked by ice or debris. Here we can see an example of the good winter cluster of a healthy, strong colony. In early spring, a good supply of pollen is especially important for the rapid development of a colony of bees. Willows are a valuable source of nutritious pollen. Because the bees' range of flight is very limited during this chilly time of the year, such sources of early pollen should not be too far away from the apiary. When making a first examination in spring, check the food reserves, the state of the brood nest and the number of frames covered by bees. This colony fulfills all our expectations. Last year's care and management have paid off handsomely. The apiary is situated near some allotment gardens. They give hives a good shelter from cold winds and provide an abundance of nectar and pollen. Here we want to demonstrate a simplified form of spring inspection. After tilting the upper brood chamber, an inspection of the passages between the frames gives enough information on the stock's strength its brood and food reserves. Other excellent sources of pollen and nectar are fruit blossom and dandelions. Surrounded by stimulating sources, these colonies have developed so well that the brood nest can be expanded. To start with, we remove the wax drawing frame already containing sealed drone brood. The comb in this Varroa bait frame is cut out. It is our first step in the fight against the dreaded mite. 
Because Varroa prefers to reproduce itself in sealed drone cells, the destruction of drone bait comb enables us to reduce the number of parasites considerably. The second wax drawing frame is also full of drone larvae, but none are sealed. It remains in the hive until our next inspection. Once more, we are able to assess colony strength as we tip up the upper brood box. As a next step, we remove the plastic foil which serves here as a crown board and replace it with a queen excluder. Then we give more room by adding a third brood box as a honey super. This new brood chamber has been filled in such a way that frames with drawn comb alternate with others with foundation. Such an arrangement of frames is important because it will provide us with many frames of drawn brood comb for the formation of new colonies at a later date. Furthermore, this way of giving room ensures that no sugary winter feed gets into the honey crop. The stock has now three stories and is well prepared for the forthcoming nectar flows. In many districts, it is the oilseed rape which provides the main crop of spring. Because of its rich pollen supply, the colonies can soon grow strong and many show first signs of an inclination to swarm. This is, of course, just the right and natural moment for making increase. All colonies must now be examined regularly at seven to nine day intervals for swarming intentions and the need for more storage space. This is best done by tilting the upper brood box when swarm cells can be seen clearly after a quick glance into the gaps between the bottom bars of frames. Again, the Varroa bait combs of the wax drawing frames are cut out in order to reduce the growth of the populations of the parasite and provide the bees with the opportunity to build comb. Next, we examine the supers. This stock has drawn out the sheets of foundation and the honeycombs are two-thirds full of honey. It is obvious that the colony requires more storage space. Burr comb is scraped off the top bars before the stock is given another honey super. In this second super, we repeat the arrangement of alternating drawn frames with others of foundation. All stocks are dealt with according to their strength and their need for more storage room. When climatic conditions are favorable in late spring, the robinia, also called false acacia, provides an important crop.
These colonies have been brought back to the home apiary and are ready for the removal of the honey and for shook swarming, one way of making a colony increase. Scales, a swarm box, a funnel and a sprayer are required for this job. The weight of the empty swarm box is recorded first of all. Furthermore, we must have a spare floor, a crown board and an empty hive body at hand to take the frames of honey after all bees have been brushed off. The funnel must be sprayed with water before we open the first hive. This helps when shaking bees into the swarm box. When raising the upper brood box, it is best to puff smoke into the passages between the combs. This makes many young bees leave the brood nest and flee into the honey supers. Next, we lift off the supers and set them aside. This prevents young bees returning into the brood nest. Covering the hive reduces the danger of robbing. Here the peak of a colony's development can be seen clearly and bees and honey must be removed at once in order to avoid swarming. Shaken or brushed into the funnel, the bees fall into the swarm box underneath. Comb after comb is brushed free of bees until the shook swarm has reached the desired weight. As a rule, it is possible to take one shook swarm from each colony. Should colony strength be insufficient to give us full weight, then it is possible to add more bees from another colony. This colony was strong enough and the mass of bees was enough to give us one shook swarm. Because the supers contain no frames of brood, this method makes certain that no drones, nor a queen, get into the shook swarm. The presence of drones would cause unnecessary unrest and could lead to overheating and the death of the bees through suffocation. The swarm boxes are covered with wire gauze on two sides in order to provide good ventilation. At this time of the year, the ideal weight of a shook swarm is around two and a half pounds of bees. After thumping the swarm box firmly on the ground, the funnel is removed and the lid is put in its place. The queenless shook swarm is now taken to an airy, shaded place. Every colony is treated in this way. 
all shook swarms remain in the shade until they are ready to be taken away. The supers are now strapped together and are loaded onto a trailer. Finally, the swarm boxes with the shaken bees are put on the trailer. It is important that the swarm boxes have adequate ventilation during transport. Having reached the extracting shed, the shook swarms are unloaded first and are set down outside for their varroa treatment. The trailer with the honey is driven into the shed for extraction. Several chemicals have been officially approved for the control of varroa mites. Here we administer a systemically acting remedy. After all shook swarms have been treated, we turn our attention to the catching of the mated queens. First, the queen is clipped with fine scissors. One third of one forewing is removed to prevent her from flying. She is then put into an introducing cage and this is closed firmly. After again thumping the swarm box firmly on the ground, the queen cage is suspended by wire among the bees. For the next 24 hours, the swarm boxes are taken to a cool room where they are put down on sheets of white paper for a simple assessment of the extent of varroa infestation. Because shook swarms are artificially created swarms and bees have an empty honey stomach, they must be given some food soon. Here they are fed with goods candy made from honey and icing sugar and the room is darkened. Once the shook swarms have been dealt with, we return to the out apiary and attend to the control of swarming in the parent stocks and the putting on of supers. Checking for signs of imminent swarming is again done by looking into the passages between combs.
Although a lot of bees of the adult population had been removed, colony strength is still sufficient to take advantage of any expected flows of nectar. The wax drawing combs full of sealed varroa infested drone brood are cut out again. All other colonies are treated in the same way. Empty honey supers are put on last. At this time of the year, the supers are filled with drawn comb because bees tend to fill drawn cells more readily. The sequence of events, which has been shown here in two stages, first the removal of a shook swarm, followed by swarm control and adding supers, can also be completed in a single operation. After adding supers, the old colonies are ready again for the next crop. The various flowers of the forest or the avenues of lime trees are suitable crops of summer. They produce floral and honeydew honeys. Back to treatment of the shook swarms. After a one day period of confinement, we remove the remnants of the candy from the shook swarms. On the paper underlays, we will find some debris and dead varroa and can evaluate the mite infestation of the shook swarms. The debris consists mainly of sugar crystals and wax scales and the oval bodies of dead varroa can easily be distinguished. During the period of confinement, the bees have fused into a small colony and their contented, quiet clustering shows this clearly. The shook swarms will be given new brood boxes. These should contain one to two combs with sealed honey, as well as frames of drawn comb, which had been removed from the parent stocks. For transport, the entrance holes are plugged with paper. Before hiving the shook swarms, the bees in the swarm boxes are sprayed with water. This prevents their flight. At the same time, we remove the caged queen. Now we dump the bees into the open space of the deep floorboard in which the front entrance has been closed with wire gauze. An inner floorboard is put on. This is followed by the prepared brood box. The queen cage is suspended between two frames and the plastic foil and the roof are put on last of all.
The bees remain in the dark room overnight. They need a little time to clean out the honey moist combs. Experience has shown that when such package bees are left in confinement overnight, they are more harmonious and content. The following morning, these freshly established colonies are taken to their new apiary. This should have been chosen to assure an ample supply of nectar and pollen for all. Giving a puff of smoke, we remove the wire screens from the entrance. Only the small upper entrance above the deep floor is opened. This picture shows the calm, settled condition of the colony. The cage with the queen is removed and is returned after the wooden plug has been replaced with one of candy. After a few hours, the bees will have opened the passage to release the queen. This slow introduction facilitates her acceptance. After one week, it is best to check her acceptance. A comb is removed from the center of the hive. Here the queen has established a good, closely packed brood nest. All is well. Until now, the colony's requirement for food had been assured by the frames of honey. To stimulate development of the brood nest, it requires a constant stream of liquid food as well as a regular supply of pollen. When the outside sources are insufficient, small helpings of food in liquid or solid form must be given. It pays us handsomely to give regular feeds of sugar syrup until the first brood emerges. All signals are now set to clear the way for a healthy and rapid development of the new colonies. They are a young queen, new combs, many young bees, a steady stream of food and a good supply of pollen. Another way of forming new young colonies is making nuclei with combs of emerging brood. The adult bees, having been brought home about nine days previously, are queenless and the frames, by now, contain only sealed brood and stores of honey. A sufficient number of brood boxes with floors and roofs must be prepared in order to divide the large accumulation of bees and brood into nuclei. These brood chambers should contain frames in the following order. An empty drawn comb, then a pollen comb, next to a comb of honey. Then we leave a gap to take the brood combs. Beyond the gap there should be two more frames of drawn comb, and a frame feeder filled with soft candy.
Now we transfer some of the frames of brood with the bees, having removed, of course, any emergency queen cells on the frames. Nuclei are made of different strengths depending on the time of the year, the way we requeen the stocks, and their final utilization. When insufficient bees are available, other bees can be shaken into the box after the frames have been closed up. Finally, in this case, the nuclei are given a ripe queen cell each. All other nuclei are formed in the same way. The original collection of bees and brood frames has now shrunk to a small nucleus which also needs a queen. Next, we open the entrance holes and let the bees fly. If necessary, these nuclei can be treated with an approved varroicide. Around four weeks after their formation, the nuclei can be given more room and second brood boxes have to be prepared in advance. They should contain two bait frames for drone comb, as well as frames of drawn comb removed from honey producing colonies. These young colonies need more room when they have at least eight frames of brood and are full of adult bees. Nuclei which have not reached this strength before the end of July should be left in single brood boxes. Where extra room is needed, two frames of sealed brood are removed from the brood nest and transferred into the new upper hive body. This brood should occupy the central space made available by the removal of the two Varroa bait frames. After closing the gap in the lower brood chamber, the two bait frames are used to fill the empty space along the outer hive wall of the lower brood box. Burr comb is removed from the top bars of the frames. The new brood chamber is put on top. This completes our manipulations on this colony and we deal with the other stocks in the same way. The new comb now encourages the queen to expand her brood nest into the second brood chamber. At this time of the year, any extension to the brood nest should be made with drawn frames 
rather than with foundation, pollen clog combs can also be used. It is possible to judge colony strength and the need for expansion by the number of passages which are packed with bees and by the large patches of brood.